So, uh, like I said earlier, my favorite little spots to hunt them and what I think is a hot spot would be very close to their bedding. Like, if I find a cave or somewhere, even if it's ivies, whatever it is, where those bears are bedding and where I can find their beds, I'll set up usually in a funnel or a flat really close to it. And the main thing with bears is I try and set up on the freshest sign I can. I have never done any good bear hunting setting up on old sign. Um, if you get on the freshest sign you can get, your odds are really high of killing one, especially if you know where its bed is. I mean, it's kind of like deer. Uh, if, if you know where a buck, mature buck's bed is, and if you can hunt pretty close to it, your odds are high, but your odds are also high of spooking it because that's what, like I said earlier, you have to really watch the weather, watch the wind, and don't go in there when, when the conditions are bad. Um, that, that's really important. And another thing I'd like to touch on real quick too, is a lot like you can tell when a bear's getting nervous if they start turning their head a lot of people don't know that um, i first learned that when i was young um, if a bear comes up close enough i mean you know it could even be 80 yards away if it starts looking in your direction but can't see where you're at and it starts turning its head the other way typically it's going to run and if you have a shot you better take it because it will be gone up I've had them do that. They'll look at me and then they'll look the other way. They'll look typically the way they came from and they'll take off as fast as they can. Bears can run really fast. So when you start seeing those, those head movements, you can tell that's when they're getting nervous. They're about to take off. So, you know, they're a lot different from deer, you know, as, as far as that goes. But when you see that, it's definitely time to make a shot if you have one. So you were talking, you know, that that's actually a good segue into um, the – uh, body language do they make any type of sound or anything also or is it kind of just that that notice that movement and then they kind of just bolt typically it's just that movement i notice um, sometimes they'll get curious and they'll kind of look around kind of like this but when they're turning their head looking like that they're about to be going forever <laughs> for the most part i mean it's when they start doing that they're going Nice. That's good to know, man. I actually grew up bear hunting um, and I didn't, I'd never heard that before. I mean, I obviously I'm not, you know, I've only taken, you know, one bear in my whole life, but I, I've seen other people, but it was never, I had something I never noticed maybe because I was younger. Um, but that's, that's legit, man. That's, that's a good piece of information there. Um, I know we actually have some guys that are in this group. I just saw that got some, that have some Think we lost you. Oh, sorry, I broke off. Am You're I good. back? You're back. All right, cool. I was just saying, uh, we had a couple guys that did uh, won a lottery system this year in their state. I know Grant's one of them, um, Northern Michigan. He said so. That's definitely some legit information. Grant, if you start seeing a bear turn his head, take the shot. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, I, I've heard there's a lot of bears up there up in Northern Michigan. So, well, there you go, Grant. You heard it. Um, so let's see here. So let's talk a little bit about bedding areas. I've seen some photos on your Facebook page um, and on your company. I think I lost you again, Justin. I think I lost you again. I can't hear you. There you are. Oh, sorry, man. I got a storm. I got a storm coming in here. I was just saying that um, bedding areas. Let's talk a little bit about bedding areas. Okay. Um, I wish like, I could, I'm I sorry. Wish I like, what do you kind of look for? Well, what I look for is like a lot of times. where I find like I was talking about the fresh sign. Um, they'll be on a on a side of a steep ridge, and you know. Some people on here who, who may have hunted whitetails in the mountains, a lot of a lot of bucks will kind of bed and push themselves against like a, a big white oak or something. Bears do the same thing. I've got pictures on my phone, like I took yesterday, just big bear beds. And I mean, it just giants. And one of them, I'm sure, was the bear I'd seen that day. Um, but they'll literally bed, just they'll set up just like a deer does. And the type of spots I find a bear bedded in is usually, like I said, around a um, cave, 
or even in a cave for that matter. Um, or like just like I said, on like a shelf or like it, sometimes I'll do it on top of a ridge, but I don't see that a whole lot. It's typically on the sides of ridges like a mountain buck. That's where I usually see most of them. And, and they can they'll bed in like um, gaps and benches too, like a deer will. But those bears, that's that's the cool thing about it. Like yesterday, I had this spot that I was wanting to go to. And I literally, we started walking about 10 a.m. And it was a spot that I'd looked at on Google Earth. And, um, you know, me and my dad had, had heard some good things about it. And I wanted to go see if I could find the where the deer was using it in there. Started walking at around 10 a.m. And I didn't get to where I was wanting to be till about 2.30. And that's when I found a buck bed. And the way I could differentiate that was, was I got down in the bed. I knew it looked like a buck bed in the first place, but I just wanted to be sure. I got down in the bed and looked, and there was deer hair in it. And then literally probably, I don't know, over 100 yards away or more, it was, probably, it was definitely more than that. There was a big bear bed, and there was, of course, there was no, you know, it couldn't find any hair in it, but there was, you know, where bears had pooped and everything all around there. So, I mean, you could find all kinds of fresh bears. So that would be like, just thinking about it, that would be the perfect place to set up because he's right on like a, a finger ridge, kind of like coming down from a flat. And it's just kind of wide open right there where he's bedded at. And it would be, that, you know, hopefully that's a good example of a kind of a spot that, that I typically see him bedding in where I'm at. Um, they'll bed and pick stuff too, but... Most I see them kind of in the more open stuff, but they'll have thick cover very close by. No, that's that's legit. And I like that analogy of they they bed like a like a mature mountain buck because for everyone in here that's hunted a mature mountain buck, um, they don't bed like other deer. They are on the edge of a freaking rock slab, looking down at you as you walk that logging road. You know, um, it was cool you said that, uh, that mountain buck bed. I'm telling you about. I found. He was literally sitting up on that side of that ridge. It was kind of like a shelf where he was at, a very small shelf. And he was looking right directly down on the logging road. So when I was coming up, he could have seen me coming up and already knew that, that I was in his world. So it's, it's pretty cool. That's, that's the reason they set up like that way. Yeah, man, that, that's where you want to know your quarry. You know, growing up, we, that's how we hunted mountain bucks was we would take turns one of us would continue up the logging road and the other one would stop and wait and you'd watch the mountain buck go over the other side. Um, so learning your quarry definitely plays into it, which for you guys that are just joining us, um, you know, Addison puts a lot of boots on the ground. That's his technique. He does some e-scouting. He does some camera stuff, but the boots on the ground gets the majority of his scouting. Um, so Hannah said, she had a question. She said, how do you tell how big a bear is in the woods? She has a hard time judging their size. Well, with, with judging their size, this is the way I do it. If I see a bear that has really small ears, and if it's great, sometimes when a bear is a great distance away, it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, kind of judge their size. I've seen 100-pound bears uh, look like, you know, fairly decent shooter-sized bears, but when I see a small bear, it's typically got, typically got really big ears. And a big bear, its ears are really tiny. I mean, it's just big and fat. You can just tell. But now when you get bears really close to you within bow range, you pretty much know what you're dealing with. Is there – well, Grant's got a question here, and, and it looks like so does Matt, but I just had a quick question about that with size. So are you at that point, you know, as many bears as you take, and I know you do your guide service, is there – do you kind of have the same mindset as what a lot of people who hunt mature bucks do, or are you kind of just like, you know, a bear is a bear, just like with like, you know, once a turkey gets past like Jake's size, you know, it's, you know, it's six-inch beard or a ten-inch beard, it's kind of still a good bird, so. Right, well – you know, if I see a bear, it's typically 200. I'd be happy with that, 200 pounds. Um, you know, I'm not as picky with bears as I am deer. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm obsessed not over hunting mountain bucks. So, like, I'm really picky about that. But um, with the bears, I'm not as picky over that. I mean, it can be really hard to judge them sometimes, especially if you're a rifle hunter and they're really good distance from you. 
but a lot of the bears I see are in both seasons, so I can judge them pretty good. I've got one or two bears I'm after this year that are really big. One of them looks like it's about 400 pounds, and I'm really pumped on it with a bow. Man, I uh, I see Matt just said come over to east coast of North Carolina, they'd spoil you rotten. I mean, that's how it is here in Florida. I see more bears here than I have anywhere in my whole life, but we just can't hunt them. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, there's, you know, there's some bears in South Georgia too that really they only have like a week season, I think. And you can only shoot one in South Georgia. It's just different, you know, it's like you know, the and stuff. But there's some big ones there too. So let's see here. Um, so Grant said, uh, do you know much about hunting bear in the swamps? That'll be kind of his setup. Um, he's not sure if anything changes. It'll be thick cover. I know you got some swamp in Georgia, but I'm not sure how much in that area. I hunt mainly like South Georgia myself. So, Well, I've done a lot of hunting in like central and South Georgia, but not for bears. They usually only have a week season. I believe it's a week. Um, you can only shoot one down there. But anyways, I would think they would kind of bed similar to the way some of the bucks do uh, down in kind of like what I would consider like the coastal plains or, you know, that that's kind of the area where we have some bears at uh, down in South Georgia. But there's not a whole lot of bears in the swamps down here as far as I know. There may be and I may be wrong, but I've never hunted them down in the swampland kind of stuff. All right, so another question here we got is from Keith, um, so PA area. He said, so around here he has a lot of acorns um, around, but there's also a lot of blackberries, like raspberries. Um, do they find that, do you find that they will favor one over the other? Yeah, with berries they will. So they'll pick berries over acorns all day. Yeah, it's, I mean, sometimes, but from what I can tell in the North Georgia mountains, yes, because we have actually had uh, berries grow in our yard, blackberries, and they'll come down there. And, I mean, they'll be in the yard in the daytime. I mean, it, it's crazy. They're pretty brave <laughs> when it's like that. But Berries are good. We don't have to deal with that too much. So. Berry, berries are good, man. I mean, that, that definitely makes sense. Just one of those food sources that they only get seasonal and – you but know they, they do love acorns and, and i just want to say in august and in september when acorns on the tree i i've found i've seen it they'll literally climb up the trees and, and what we call lap them they'll be getting acorns out of the trees and i mean really honestly it kind of hurts for the deer um you know i mean they're they're climbing them before they even hit the ground and you'll see up in the tree where a, a limb is broken that's a bear and i've, I've seen it a lot in the north georgia mountains so Grant, hopefully that answered your question. Um, you know, just let us guys know if we need to dive into more detail. We can always message you after. Um, so let's talk a little bit. You, you can kind of touch on this more if you'd like, Adam. I know you've kind of mentioned it a few times. So if we don't need to go much into detail unless people want. Um, but as far as like sign, um, what are you looking for for sign? I know you said the fresher, the better, but your typical scats, bedding areas, scratches, things like that. I'm looking mainly for like either a bed with a really good bed, like a big, big bed, very fresh, or I'm looking for scat. A lot of times I find scat and uh, if it's really fresh, that's typically where to hunt. Um, I do that and occasionally I'll find where they scratch on the trees and in the North Georgia mountains, they love to, to like stand up and bite on um, telephone poles. So it's 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 pretty cool. They'll bite on those telephone poles just to leave scent, basically. Oh, I was gonna say I was wondering if it was the that what's it called, Chris in it or whatever. Yeah, they do it a lot. In the mountains. I've seen them do it like almost every other telephone pole. You'll see it where they like like done a lot of biting on it, and scratching. So it's pretty cool. Um, let me see here. We had somebody, so we kind of touched on this, but he's coming in a little late, but we're doing okay on time. I only wanted to talk a little bit more about, uh, aging and size, which you already kind of touched on and then reading the body language is what I had. So, um, we got about 25 minutes left, but if you don't mind just kind of touching back on Jason said, um, he got in a little bit late and he was kind of wanted to know more about scent. 
Um, obviously, you said play the wind. They have a great nose. Um, and he said, being being they are predators, would they respond to doe urine or even a call of some sort? I know you kind of touched on that, but we'll just give them a quick little cliff note. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the bleat call is what I use, you know, I mean, for calling bears. Um, they'll come to that. You know, in, in North Georgia mountains, you can't bait bears. You can bait deer and hogs, but you can't bait bears. So that's that's why you really have to focus on where the food source is, where they're bedding, and where the freshest sign is. And where all those things are at, where the freshest sign is, that's where I set up and call for that bleak can. And, and they'll come to it typically, especially if they, if they hear it. Nice. Let me see here. Um, I've had a few of them ignore it, but it's it's pretty rare. I mean, typically they'll come. You know, they just get curious. I'm looking for it. So it looks like Matt knows a little bit about the swamp hunting too, being in North Carolina, Grant. So you can you guys can do a little chatting too. Um, Hannah said. Uh, how do you keep your trail cameras safe? That's a good question because we all know. I just saw Johnny out in Wyoming just got a camera freaking wrecked. Um, <laughs> they got grizzly bears and stuff out there, though. But uh, how do you keep your camera safe if you're able to? Seems like all bears want to do is eat them. Yeah, that's that's what they do. It don't matter. What they're going to they're gonna go after that camera. Um, the problem with, with cameras is it's gotten to the point where I'll actually wait to set up all my trail cameras until about Thanksgiving because September to October, the bears are just on the move. And I've hung cameras up trying to get pictures of deer and a bear will find it and I'll go up there and either the camera will be broken, it'll be hanging off the tree facing the ground or it'll be gone, like just completely gone. And uh, you'll have to walk around and look for it and then you'll find it laying on the ground like, several yards from where you hung it. You can use a bear box, but I don't really do that. I just buy cheap cameras, like the Tasco cameras you can get at Walmart. Um, you know, I set it on video mode. They, I mean, really for the price, they take good, you know, videos. Um, the pictures, I don't, I don't like too much, a little bit blurry, but the videos on those cameras are great. Um, that's what I use. Uh, I mean, you can put some, some cell cameras up, but I know they will they would destroy them. Uh, that's, I would put that up like a nice expensive camera. I would put that up later in the season because the good thing for me is when I'm putting up cameras, I'm putting them up later in the season because the deer in the mountains are rutting. They don't start rutting until around Thanksgiving and after Thanksgiving. So uh, yeah, it's really hard to keep bears off your trail camera. The best thing I can do, can tell you, is also keep it really well hidden. Keep the camera hidden. But typically, they're going to find it in the They're going to smell where you handle it. Dang, that's crazy, man. That's I just think that's so wild that they want to eat that. I mean, I think they're just curious. I've got pictures and videos of just a mouth. You see teeth, and they're just biting on it. <laughs> just chewing. Just, I mean, I've seen those videos on YouTube where they're chewing on the bottom of a ladder stand and stuff. So they're probably just getting all that crud and crap out of their mouth. Something to chew on. It'd be like us taking a piece of plastic and picking your tooth or something. I wish they could um, buy something else. Dude, I'm, I'm the same way with camera, man. I just made the purchase on a couple of cell cameras because Bow Creek just came out with one that's supposed to be Savage, and Spartan's been doing some crazy stuff. But we keep those on the private where we ain't got to worry about the bears. And in the woods, I'm using the $50 coverts. I'm hiding them. I'm taking a palmetto leaf because they got spikes on the handles, and I'm putting them right there, trying to deter the bears. Yeah. Let's see. That was a great question, Hannah, especially because everyone's run into bear issues. So let me just double check my list here. So we talked about agent and size. We talked about read and body language uh, for you guys that, that just joined us. Um, Adam said you definitely want to, if a bear starts looking back and looking where it came, he's about to bolt. So take that shot. Um, we talked about sign, bedding areas, hot spots, calling, uh, spotting stalk techni or tactics, techniques. Uh, Adam, is there anything else you or you guys drop your questions too? But Adam, is there anything you that you had specific you wanted to touch on? Yeah, um, if anyone's familiar on here, when you hunt hogs, you'll smell them before you get. You can kind of see them. Occasionally, I've done that with bears, where I've actually gotten really close to one. It'll be maybe on the other side of the ridge for me or something, 
and I can smell it before I even see it. So occasionally that happens. Um, you know, if you smell like a really musky odor, kind of like it smells very similar to pigs. Uh, you know, there's either a pig close by or a bear. It's pretty cool. I mean, you, you can occasionally I can smell them. It's crazy. So Grant, I think that's a great question. And a couple reasons I think that's a great question is because Grant, for you guys that don't know, Grant's a pretty experienced hunter. He he hunts, he's boots on the ground, he hunts with a bow, mature bucks, that whole jazz. But Grant is going on a quota hunt or a, a lottery hunt in his home state for bear, which is like a holy grail to get. Um, so he wants to make sure he's making the most ethical shot for the animal and himself. So he said um, so definitely not a dumb question, brother. That's an ethical question there. But he said, kill shot. Am I still aiming high behind the front shoulder? I'd aim about kind of midways behind the front shoulder. That's typically what I do. You could aim high and be okay. Uh, but I do it about midways behind the front shoulder. Um, that's typically the best shot to me on a black bear. That's what I usually do. And they usually don't go far uh, with a rifle or a bow that way. So I've shot them with a bow and they'll run behind me and they'll literally fall almost to where I can see them. So, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's very similar to deer really. Let's see here. Jeff said in Maine, our bear season is August to November. Yeah, I know you guys got a big one, um, but we have to deal with baiting, trapping, hounds um, until October. What would be a good way to spot and stalk them? Would it be by hunting food sources like berries and acorns? So it looks like Jeff's wanting to know how he can spot and stalk while all that extra curricular hunting's going on. Yeah, um, I'd be around the food sources, of course, you know, where the freshest sign is. But if you can really find where their beds are, like you can find a really fresh bear bed, that's where I would be for sure. I mean, I, I, I just like to hunt close to where they bed. Because like I was telling you earlier, just, you know, where I hunt next to the cave. That's where I was going to take you. I can literally even set up on top of the cave and shoot down at them and coming in out of So I like either going at the cave or wherever they're bad or setting up as close as I can to it. You know, if the wind's bad, you know, I won't get very close to the bed in there. I'll just kind of try to cut them off. So that's what I would do, especially when, when there's a lot of hunting pressure going on. It's like deer, you know, they're going to be in that thick stuff and and, and where other people ain't going to go. And sometimes it takes a lot of walking to find them. I've, I've been there and I've done it. I mean, that makes sense, man. I I do hear people that say, you know, go deep, walk, walk, walk. But when you actually can look and you have a track record behind it, it, it makes it m make a little more sense, especially because you said, like, soon as season's over, you're, like, out there, like, going, going yeah. crazy, right? Yeah, I go literally the day after the season's over, just like the past season, I go looking for deer. I wake up in the morning. Um, I, what I'll do is actually spot and stalk deer and grunt. See, like I said, we had a late rut. It's usually every year they'll rut all the way until about early January, and that's when our season closes. So I can go walking and grunting and trying to get them to come down to me. And I've seen some great bucks doing that. I found exactly where they, they bed. And I've also found where bears bed, even in the wintertime. And man, when, when I found bear beds in the wintertime, they are just matted down. They usually, I mean, they don't do a whole lot of moving that time of year. So, um, yeah, like when, when the season, and it's kind of tough, like in the wintertime, that's definitely not a time I would be wanting to scout for black bears. Black bears, I most of the scouting I would do is in the summer. And I do a lot of summer scouting for uh, deer in the mountains. So that's how I see all my bear signs. Nice. Um, let's see here. So Hannah said, we've got some good questions rolling out. It's perfect. We're about 15 minutes till eight. Uh, Hannah said, how do you have any concerns with bow hunting bears off the ground? I've heard they will occasionally run towards something after being shot. I've never really had a, a, any dangerous encounters with black bears. Uh, if you get around them with their cubs, that's a different story. But I would be more concerned about wild hogs, honestly, off the ground. But I love hunting bears off the ground with a bow. It's just an adrenaline rush. It's just like I love hunting mature bucks off the ground. I don't know, there's something about being eye level with it. And in the mountains where I hunt, um, really, 
you, you're kind of better off hunting off the ground, in my opinion, in some areas. You know, there, there's some spots I've looked at where I can be literally skylined. I mean, they'll, if I'm in a stand, they can see my silhouette in the sky. And I mean, it, they'll bust you. Yeah, I mean, even a bear can see that. And they can't see that great, but they can pick out, pick up stuff like silhouettes, just like a deer can. But the thing about a bear is like their eyesight is a lot like the wild hogs. They just cannot see very good. But, um, but the, like I said, I think they still make out like outlines and stuff. And when they see something drawn like that, they're going to be gone. But if for dangerous encounters though, I've had very few of them with a black bear. Um, the only thing is you don't ever want to corner them. And that's with any animal, right? I mean, you really don't want to corner any kind of wild animal. I mean, even if you're cornering a deer, I'm sure it would try to defend itself one way or the other. So, um, yeah, I just, I typically don't have very many problems with that. And I've had, I've had bears get really close to me hunting off the ground. Like when I was a kid, um, I was really young and I was flipping that bleak can. Um, I was all by myself and I heard something just I could barely hear it coming down toward me and I was like oh maybe that's a buck and I look up and it's about a 250 pound black bear and I'm sitting there and it gets I let it get too close to me and I was really young like I said I was I don't know I was 12 or 13 years old and I was just playing around around my my house around my private land with just a little bow just trying to see if I could shoot a deer and uh, it came all the way up to me and it seen me draw back and it knew something was bad off and it got behind the tree and just bolted and it kind of stayed in line with that tree and it, it was gone out of my life so they they won't do anything i get you i get you scared man i get you scared um so somebody victor said um what he said that's what i want to know what caliber suggestion so uh someone had said let me see if i can find it oh here we go um He's, he said, as a 450 Bushmaster, a good caliber, and then Victor followed up with, yeah, what do you think is a good caliber suggestion? Honestly, I stick with 30 dollars Like, I mean, I almost, yeah, every bear I have shot with that 30 alt 6 has not gone far. Um, I mean, I, I've even had some questionable shots that I regret when I was younger and I didn't go far. So, um yeah, 30 alt six that has just been deadly to me for bear and deer, of course. Um, but, I mean, you could get away with, like I said, you know, 270s, um, 308 is another great caliber. So he pro I would say a 30 alt six or 308. I've shot some and let them get away with a 7 millimeter 08, unfortunately, but they were at close range. So. Now, uh, to kind of piggyback off that question as far as bow, I mean, obviously, guys, for y'all that know at service side, everything works for certain people. Just because Adam is going to use, a, let's say, a wasp broadhead doesn't mean that we would need everyone to go out and buy wasp, and that's the only thing that's going to kill bear. But is there typically, what do you kind of use for your bow setup, like your pullback, you know, arrows and, and broadheads for them? Usually about 65 or 70 pounds, uh, broadhead, like you're talking about, rock broadhead, man, that'll, that'll, I mean, it, it'll put a hole in it. I mean, I've seen it. I've got pictures of it. They don't go far with a rock broadhead. Uh, they're very hard to find. Uh, thank God I've got a box of them I just got in the mail the other day, and that is, they are daily on bear and deer. It's a mechanical broadhead. I have let bears get away with a fixed broadhead. Um, I, I even made good shot. I know I made a good shot on one when I was younger. It was, I think it was the first bear, probably the first animal I'd ever, one of the first animals I'd ever shot with a bow. I made a, a decent shot on it and it got away. Um, and that was with a fixed muzzy, I believe. But, and there are some fixed broadheads you can you know, kill on, but I haven't had very much success with fixed broadheads that I even, unfortunately. So let's see here. A couple more questions. Christopher said, what is the, oh, this is a different question here. This will be a good little, little story one. So what's the oddest behavior you've seen or heard of a bear? And is there a sign of CWD in deer or something similar? So I guess a type like C, CWD, but for bears. I'm not sure about the for bears. Um, 
I actually, to me, this is an odd behavior for me to see. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that a bear won't really chase a buck or anything like that. I watched it my, with my own eyes. Uh, I was actually muzzleloader hunting. And this was not that long ago, probably three or four years ago. I was set up on a finger ridge. It was, went right into a, like a funnel was right below it and went into a creek. So behind me, a buck came and he was definitely like covering some ground. He was trying to get out of the way. So he got by me and literally it couldn't have been, but several more minutes later, here comes a bear and it is like nose to the ground trying to find where that buck was. And it was moving pretty good too. I couldn't get a shot on the bear. Uh, it was a little bit too far away for a muzzleloader. And that bear was probably 175 pounds. It wasn't a giant by no means. Uh, and that buck, he was probably a year and a half old buck, but he was still after him. And, and another thing that's bizarre is actually seen a buck uh, running from a wild hog one time. It was getting just out of dodge. Uh, it was a, it was, a, I think it was a five point. It was a fairly decent five point uh, running from a pig one day. And the pig had its nose on the ground looking for it too. I've actually, it's on one of my very old cameras. I've got the footage and I'm sure it'd be very grainy, but I've tried to film and it was probably, I think when I seen that pig chase the deer, that was probably 2011 or so. So it was really grainy footage, but it was really cool to see. So yeah, I've seen some bears do some weird things too, but that's probably the coolest thing I guess I'd seen. It was definitely different because you don't hear bears chasing bucks. No. I've well, maybe seen like one YouTube video and more than likely you don't know if it already had snuck up on it and wounded it or that's always what we heard growing up was they're not out there actually like mowing down deer but then you hear some some of them are but I mean that's just like I've seen deer eating bugs I've literally seen deer crunching on grasshoppers in a field and I'm like whoa like what is going on <laughs> See, a lot of like what bears like to eat, too, I was just thinking about that. Um, a lot of times I'll see them, like you'd be walking in the woods, and they'll, I mean, of course, they eat fawns. I mean, I know they do. They're looking for that summer. But a lot of times you'll find where logs have been flipped over or rocks. Either, I, I think they just pick out worms and grubs and whatever kind of insects they can find. And another thing that I meant to add that I always look for is bees nests that have been dug out by a bear. Uh, when I was scouting yesterday, unfortunately, I ended up in one and the bees attacked me. Uh, it wasn't too much fun either. <laughs> but man, they love digging out bees nests. What they do is they get the little larva and they eat it from the bees nest. And you'll be walking through the woods and you'll see a, a dirt pile. And then you look, there's a hole and you'll see where they dug it out. And uh, I see that, but I'll, I'll see that. And then, of course, like I said, where rocks are flipped over in logs. That's uh, when you see that, that's that's a bear sign. And like I said, they're just doing that to find bugs and, and stuff like that. Nice. That's legit, man. I'm, I'm glad you touched back on that a little bit. Um, let's see, Matt, put one in. It drops you know, three to five minutes. Um, let's see. Keith said, I've only shot one bear, it was with a rifle. But if I were to hunt it with a bow, do you seem, do they seem to act like a deer and kind of jump the string? They will. They will. They'll do it. Um, like I said earlier, you know, they're really fast. I mean, I don't think they get enough credit for being as fast as they are. I mean, I've, I've shot and missed them. Um, I've shot and missed them with a bow. Uh, they can, it's amazing how fast they can react. It, it, it is He's right. It's a lot like a deer. I've, I've seen them the way they can duck. It's, it's crazy. You know, I'm really glad you brought that up, Adam. I, we're we're kind of touching on it's it's about five till eight. There's a couple more questions. But you saying that you miss, you know, I, I think we don't see enough people. You know, I always see the great big mountain bucks you kill and the big bears you kill and then your dad killing them. And then, you know, I know you had put your wife on a deer and you know, she's out there hunting with you. You guys are killing pigs and all this stuff, but you know, you don't you don't hear too much about you know people missing. So I guess if we could kind of take a piece of advice for you, if you could kind of summarize it, like what would you say was maybe a mistake or or was it just like happenstance that is there was or something maybe you could learn to help others to keep from missing, or was it just kind of like the way the you know kind of stars were aligned or it's a mental thing to me. 
Um, when I see a big mountain buck or a bear, when, when I'm looking at it through the scope or when I'm pulling back getting ready to shoot with the bow, um, I am, I, it's going through my mind. I'm thinking like, if I miss this, it's gone. And with a mature mountain buck, it is very hard to see. Like, I mean, it is just hard enough to see one. So when I see it's a mature deer and it's got a big rack, I mean, like, I don't, I quit looking at the rack. I quit looking at all that. I focus on the kill zone. I don't like sit there and look at the rack through the scope. It's just like with a bear. I don't sit there and just look at the bear and observe it or anything like that. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to kill it when it comes out. You, you gotta, it's gotta be in your mind that it can get away. You've got to make a good shot. And it's hard to come by, even a big bear. I mean, it's hard to come by a big, mature black bear. I mean, they're really smart. And uh, it's just like a mature buck, you know. I mean, they, they learn pretty quick. And uh, But it's definitely a mental thing. I mean, it's like with my wife. Um, she wanted to kill a mountain buck really bad. Really, really, really bad. And I, I kept taking her. And I said, you're really going to have to do a lot of walking for it. And I know this sounds crazy, but... Um, I've got this spot like time. We caught the 10 mile walk. It's five miles in, five miles out. And it's the spot I'm hunting is three funnels meeting together, which bears love stuff like that too, by the way. But anyways, that spot I took her to and she was worn out. We got in there and a buck comes out and I told her how, how rare it is to see just a decent buck in the mountains. And it come out and she got excited and, and missed it. And that, it happens and she learned though i got to give it to her she learned right after that that you have to make it count and literally i think it was the yet yeah, was the next day i took her to a spot that wasn't as hard to walk to it was pretty steep but it wasn't as hard to walk to and we seen a, a young buck come up to us and she wanted it really bad um i flipped the can at it it wouldn't come to the can <clears throat> so i just went <clears throat> twice just grunted and he came up there, got into range and she took her time on it. And it wasn't a very easy shot. She took her time on it. And I sat there and watched her focus on it. And she dropped that deer in its tracks. I mean, a perfect shot. I didn't even know what hit him. So it's, you know, I say that about deer, it's the same with bears. When I'm looking at a bear, or I'm pulling my bow back and I'm really, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Like I'm not overthinking it, but I'm sitting there in my mind. I know that, you know, I, if I miss, it's over. There's no getting it back. You know, if I make a bad shot, there's no getting it back. So you really have to put a lot of emphasis on making a good shot because, I mean, where I hunt is big woods. And when you blow that shot, it's blown. It's done. That That's great, man. And, you know, I, I love kind of how this webinar kind of took, like, went into the, I guess, form the way it did because, you know, nothing that you do, I would say, is – something where yeah go out tomorrow and you're going to be freaking dropping that mature mountain buck by following these steps but if you if you guys have been paying attention and, and kind of following along and listening to what i've been saying and then also the questions that have been asked most of the stuff here is stuff where if you just stop a minute just think pay attention to your surroundings like you said with your wife you know you know great job hannah but um you know when we, when we make a mistake we you're never going to learn from something no youtube video no four years in college i don't care if you're at the range every single day until you miss a buck or you until you miss a bear or until something jumps on the string or whatever you're never going to truly understand what like what that's like and what that feeling's like and how to how you have to come back from it um, so I really like like everything you're saying. It's it's stuff that I wouldn't say basic because that's not the word, but it's very simplistic. Like you're not like, oh, I need you guys to go out, spend two thousand dollars on this setup. I need you to buy the best camo. I need you to have the best gun. I need you to have X, Y, and Z. You use what works for you. It works for you. Um, you know, and and a lot of the stuff is simplistic that at everyone here could apply. And it's going to make you a little bit more successful than what you were yesterday, for sure. I also want to add that some of the best uh, ways that I learned, like how to, you know, how to be good at, at killing big bucks and or killing a big bear, is when I was young, all the deer I would miss and all the mistakes I made when I was a kid, when I was young, those mature bucks, they really, all of them taught me lessons. 
And even I even let a bear or two get away when I was a kid. They all just, I mean, I learned lessons from every one of them. So, I mean, you know, if you miss, you can't be too down on yourself. You just got to, you got to take that as a lesson. You know, I mean, yeah, it feels great when, when we kill, like when you kill a big buck or you kill a big bear, it feels great. But a lot of times you learn a lot when you miss one too. You learn what you need to be doing the next time. That's great, man. So last question I got here and guys, we're, we're pushing about eight o'clock, so we'll wrap it up soon. But if Adam's got anything, obviously, Adam, the floor is yours. Um, but Chris had said um, about, oh, I lost my spot. So Chris said, what's your favorite way to prepare bear as a meal? A friend of mine from college and his wife loved using the fat for baking. You know, I really, I like bear, but to be completely honest, I don't really eat it a whole lot. I have a family that I know of that I give away most of my bears to, and they love bear. And they would be the people to ask how to prepare it because, I mean, I'll be pulling up with a bear in the back of my truck, and before I can even get the truck stopped, they're dragging it out. So I, I like giving mine away. I mean, I love deer meat. I can't help it. Like, I just, I like bear, but deer is my favorite. I'm very, very good with bear. I just, I guess I give it away to my friends, you know, talking about, and um, that, that's just what I usually do. But now, bear jerky, I, I mean, I've heard some people like it, and it's not too bad, but it's, bear meat's really greasy, really, really greasy. I'll have to look into that and you know we'll have to get your people on a podcast sometime and and maybe touch in on that good preparation for bear I mean I'm sure it's some you know I, I learned from someone about you know like doing crow and making brine and I'm sure there's some weird way so we'll we'll definitely check it out and and see um so let's see here I think that was all the questions we had Adam did you feel like you need to touch on anything else here or do you guys have any more questions for Adam you can think of Basically, just, just not to overthink it, really, and just hunt bears. I hunt bears a lot like I do deer, and that's how I've been really successful killing bears and, and, and having a lot of bear encounters. I mean, and, you know, you just you need to be on the freshest sign you can find. That's that's really key to be on that really fresh sign because, like I said, you can hunt that old sign, but I usually don't do very well in areas like that. I mean, they're, they're going to be where the food's at, I'm sure. Just like deer. Slow cooking in the crock pot barbecue. Seems like slow cooking is always a good way to go with those like tougher, greasier meats. Um, so everyone, we're going to be wrapping this up um, just so I can respect everyone's time. Everyone can get their kids to bed, all that stuff. Adam, I appreciate you jumping on, but I'm going to get Adam to kind of throw a plug here uh, for his guide business. Um, where you guys can reach him on his socials, how you can get in contact with him while he's doing that. If you guys have any last minute questions, go ahead and drop them in here. Now's the time to ask. That way you have time to prepare and then come bear season, try to apply it. If it don't work, let's jump back on here. We'll, we're more than happy. I'm sure Adam is too to, to get in here and do some trial and error during and maybe after season all depending um, because at the end of the day, it, you know, we definitely want to get out there and hunt. Um, but, uh, Adam, throw that plug in where these guys can reach you. I will, but I just thought of one more thing. That I'm oh, add yeah, to go for it. Something really important. Um, a lot of people, when they're trying to find bear trails, um, it's a lot different from deer where you see the vegetation, like really sweat. I don't know how to explain it, but it looks like it's matted down. A lot of times I'll, I'll call it a slide because it looks like one slid down a hill. You can find their trails where they've kind of slid and stuff will be mashed down. That's how I find their beds, of course. But where they're walking, I find if they're, especially if they're a big bear, everything's going to be kind of mashed down where they're walking. And, you know, of course, you won't see the pad. Like their, their paw track's very good, but you can kind of see an outline of, of how it looks. But that's, that's something really important to look for is, is like those trails that are just, like I said, the vegetation just kind of matted down a little bit. And you can see where it's been a, a fairly big animal walking and, and you know with deer you won't see that but with bears you will but yeah my youtube channel is hunting and fishing in god's country uh, right now i'm actually doing a a series on how to hunt big woods and mountain whitetails um also i have a, a guide page it's adam's appalachian adventures on facebook 
and um, you can ask you can ask me any questions you want on my YouTube or my Facebook. So I'm also on the Serviceide app as well. Nice, nice. Well, I really appreciate it, man. I'm sure that guys do too. We we don't see a lot about, you know, we always see, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love whitetail hunting mature bucks too, but it's nice to throw in a little, a little Hail Mary, like something like this once in a while. Cause you know, I do notice, I don't know if it's because of the uptick with social media, like meat eater and things like that, hunting public, but a lot of people are trying to venture into other realms, which at the end, I mean, that's great for conservation because if more people are wanting to get bear tags and put in for lotteries and things like that, you know, I mean, times have changed, you know, you don't, you know, a lot of people just kind of focus on deer and it's really nice, I think, to see that these other types and forms of hunting, um, plus I've always put you and big black bear hunting together, you know, seeing your socials and things. And even, you know, for you guys that don't know, I've got pictures of Adam from when he was younger, still dropping bears with them old bows. So <laughs> I love it. I love bear hunting, man. I love deer hunting. Though. Like like I said, that's how I figured out how to hunt bears from deer hunting, like mountain bucks. So you know, and I'll end with this guys. Hopefully everyone got their questions in. We'll wrap this up, but when you guys are out there on the internet and, and stuff like that, obviously service side's a social club because we want, you know, that's how you reach people. It's the internet. That's how we're all talking right now. We got, gosh, guys from all the way out West to Michigan to Georgia. I'm in Florida, Pennsylvania. We got guys all over the place. So it's a great way to connect. But, you know, when you hear things and when you kind of see people like doing their thing, you know, you always want to make sure that you're getting, you know, I guess the right information and not misinformation. So seeing, you know, getting with people that are kind of, you know, really, I, I guess the best way to put it is getting it done. Um, you know, I know Adam's always getting it done. He has a track record. If if Adam had all the camera footage out that he has, uh, you, you'd probably be a big YouTube star already. <laughs> but, I've, got, I've got four SD cards just full of stuff just from this last fall. And I haven't gotten all of it on YouTube yet, but. I'm going to do a, a how to find uh, bedding areas for black bears. I'm going to do a whole video dedicated to that too, because I know a lot, a lot of people love, you know, trying to learn about how to hunt black bears. So like you said earlier, it's something that's really popular. It is. It's getting popular. And I just want people to know, like always make sure you're kind of hitting up the right people and, and get with those people. I mean, just because they don't have their whole social media full of dead animals doesn't mean they're the right person. You'll know by talking to them. And we always try to point you guys in the right direction. We have a ton of people in service side, just like Adam. You know, we'll just call it like it is. I always put them in the expert category of, yeah, they still learn every day, but they get it done the majority of the time. Um, so I really appreciate you taking an hour or so out, man, to, to kind of school us a little on some Bear 101. And if you guys feel like there's anything you'd like to know more in depth, obviously Adam said he's going to make a stuff on his YouTube channel so you can watch that. Um, but hit me up or hit Adam up. We can always jump back on the horn and try to get you guys the information that you need. Definitely get on the app, too, because there's a lot of you – know, you, can, you can ask any kind of question about hunting on there. There will be somebody to answer it. That's what I like about the app. And nobody's going to give you any flack or anything like that. Oh, yeah. We, we, unwritten rule, man. I've never, we, ha we got some guys that'll cut up, but that's just who they are. We don't have any issues with people not being able to ask questions and there's no dumb questions. I mean, you look at like Grant asking about that kill shot. Grant's killed plenty of animals. It's not, Grant, it ain't his first year hunting and he still had a question like that. It doesn't, matter you know i'm going snow goose hunting for the first time just because i've killed a bunch of deer don't make me you know right. not shoot right you gotta you gotta ex ask the experts man ask the people that are doing it all the time that's what i like about hunting you learn every day the best way to learn is learning from the animals you hunt you know mm -hmm. i feel like you need to scout as much as you can if not more than what you hunt just to learn game your hunt you know should always know your area, man. I'm I'm big on scouting down here because we don't use flashlights, and it's or you already know how Florida is, so we don't use flashlights. We literally sit outside the truck for thirty minutes or so. We get accustomed to the to the darkness. You wouldn't believe what your eyes can do when there's no light, and you can get to your spot and see pretty much fairly well. And if you don't scout and you don't look around. You know, that the safety plays a big part, but you're going to jump everything up or you're not going to get in there the most efficient way. And 
sometimes you get lucky a blind squirrel finds a nut but for those mature animals you you got to be able to slip in there without them getting you oh yeah for sure sure Awesome. Well, Adam, thanks again. We appreciate everyone coming. I messed up. I actually didn't record the first 20 minutes, but hopefully we still got enough information here. Um, but yeah, it was still a great one, Adam, and we'll definitely do it again soon. That sounds great, man. Enjoyed it. All right. Talk to y'all later.